Hi, in this video we are going to create a frequency distribution with the TI Inspire graphing calculator. Um, for this, I am going to start with a new document. Um, and for this, I'm going to add a lists and spreadsheet. And what you would do is you would take and you would name your data set. You want to name your variable something so that you have it. I'm just going to call it data. Okay, and then I'm going to arrow down and I would put in all of these data values, the 22, 43, 23, and I would continue doing that because of the fact that you guys don't want to watch me type all of this in. I already have it saved, so I'm going to go back to my home screen and I am going to go to my documents and I'm going to go down to the bottom here to the frequency distribution inspire because I already put all this data in. I am not going to save the one that I just started, but what I did is I have all of the data points in here. There are all 27 of them are represented. Okay, and we are going to use the graphing calculator to help us fill in the class, the frequency, the relative frequency, and then we're also going to use it to help us draw a histogram. Um, we will go ahead and do both the frequency histogram and the relative frequency histogram um, because I wanted to show you the features that the calculator has. So if you remember, to create a frequency distribution, you must decide the number of classes. I chose five classes for this particular one, so we are going to use five classes. And if you remember to find your class width, we would do our maximum data value minus our minimum data value and divide by the number of classes. This is something that you do want to do even if you're using the calculator. We are going to use the calculator to help us with this to figure out what our value is. Um, so if we go through our maximum value is 52 and our minimum value is 20. Okay, So we would have to be able to find that from the data. We can use the calculator to help us and I'll show you how in just one second. Um, in here, remember that our class, we always start with our minimum value first, so this is always our minimum. So we would start with 20. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do on the calculator is I'm going to do a control I just to show you the nice features that this has, and I'm going to just add a calculator. And if I type in max, this would give me the maximum value. Um, and then I can hit the variable button and it'll bring up the values that I have. So that I'm going to take the maximum data minus, and then we're going to do the minimum data. So we're going to find the minimum of our data set. So if you notice under VARS, it does bring up the list that we have. So we can find the maximum minus the minimum. And we end up with 32. It's kind of hard to see. Um, but if we took 52 minus 20, um, your calculator will be able to find your maximum data set and your minimum, so if you wanted to do that quicker without having to scan through, if you have a bunch of data points, um, it is a nice feature that it has. And then we would divide this by our classes since we want five. Um, with my calculator, remember with the Inspire, it defaults to just doing fractions, so I'm going to hit Control and Enter so I can get a decimal approximation. So if I take my max minus my min, I end up with 32 over 5, which is approximately 6.4. And if you remember, we always, 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 100% of the time round up. So our class width would end up being 7. So we would use a class width of 7. We could go ahead and fill all of these in, but again, what I'm doing is trying to help you use the calculator. So um, I'm going to use the calculator to help us find our class width. So what we're going to do is we're going to control an I again. And this time I'm going to add a data and statistics screen. And on the data and statistics screen, it always just randomly throws whatever points you have in the spreadsheet here. And then you would click at the bottom. It says click to add a variable and I'm going to add the data variable set to it. It defaults to a dot plot. I do not want the dot plot to help us with creating the frequency distribution. So what I want to do is I'm going to hit menu and I'm going to choose plot type and I'm going to choose the histogram. With the histogram it sets it up if we counted through here this gives us about 20 different the bin widths on this is way too small like the bin width is too small they're counting by twos 
Um, and remember that we wanted to have a bin width of seven, so we can control that. And the way that we do it is we go to menu and we go to plot properties. And we wanna look at the histogram, sorry, I accidentally. Okay, we wanna look at the histogram properties, so we're gonna choose number two. And we're going to go to the histogram scale. Or sorry, we wanna go to bin settings. I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. We do wanna to go to two. And we want to have equal bin widths. So we want them all to be the same. And remember that we wanted seven. The alignment is going to be where you're starting. So this value over here, our minimum value. So we want to align it at 20 and click OK. And when we do this, notice that we now have one, two, three, four, five classes, which is what we wanted. The problem is, is you can't see the whole thing. So I do have to adjust the window. So if I adjust my windows, um, I'm going to go to window settings and I'm going to change it to where our Y max is 12 just to see if we can see everything and hit enter and now we have a nice histogram drawn out here. Uh, we can use this to help us draw our histogram on paper. Um, if you hover over each of the points it does show you that there are eight points that fall between 20 and 27. So for this our next class limit our lower class limit would be 27 and then if we look at the third class it starts at 34 the next class starts at 41 and the next class starts at 48 and if you notice they do have it in interval notation um, they're saying that it includes the lower limit, so it includes the 20, but it does not include the next value, the 27. It's everything up to 27. In this case, since we're dealing with integers, it would really be 20 to 26, because remember, this was always one less. Everything from 27 to 33 would fall in here. 34 to 40, 41 to 47, and then 48 to 54. So this would help us set up our class width using the calculator to help us. Um, for the frequency, if you hover each of, over each of the classes, it does tell you how many points are in there. You do wanna make sure that you verify that you put the data in incorrectly because if you are relying on the calculator to do it, it's only going to calculate what data you put in. So we have a frequency of eight for this one. For the next category, which is our mode, it's our highest value, it does have a um, frequency of 10. From 34 to 40, it has a frequency of 5, 3, and our last category has a frequency of 1. So you can use the calculator to help you come up with your frequency so that you're not having to go through and individually count. You do, again, want to make sure, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to make sure that you put on all of your data correctly. For the relative frequency, what we can do is we can use the calculator to help us find that as well. If we hit the menu button again, and this time when I go to plot properties and the histogram properties, um, this time I want to choose option one. Sorry, I me go back up. Okay, so option two, the histogram properties, and then this time we wanna choose option one, and we wanna do it as a percent. And if you notice over here, it now changes this to a percent, which is now a relative frequency histogram. So the relative frequency is 29.63%. Um, so we could put this in as 0.2963. We could also do it by eight divided by 27. Remember that the sum of our frequency, this part right here, um, should add up to be the number of terms that we started with. So we have 18, 23, 26, 27. It does, we started with a three by nine grid, so that was 27 points. To get this value, we can do eight divided by 27 to get us the 0.2963, or again, we can just hover over this. For the next one, it's 0.3704. For the next one, we have 0.1852. The last category point, sorry, the second to last is point one one one, and then our last cal category is point zero three seven zero. Okay, and then again, we do want to see that this sums up. Remember that this was the frequency divided by n. That's how we calculated this. 
frequency divided by n. So I could have also done this by doing 8 divided by 27, 10 divided by 27, 5 divided by 27, etc. But using the calculator, the graph, it really does help us to get there quicker. The sum of this should add up to be 1. If you notice 3, 4, 2, 1, this gives us 10. And then we have 7, 14, and then 6 gives us 0 again. Um, so this does add up to be 1. It works out and everything checks out. So again, the graphing calculator really does help us get through this a lot quicker so you don't have to do hand calculations. Um, and you can go back and forth between things. Like if we wanted to use the calculator to show you that 8 divided by 27 and remember that we have to hit the control enter does give us the point 2963 it did round it for us so it rounded to four places if you needed three places you could round less round more um, you can put this onto paper you can just take and label it the nice thing about the inspire is it does include the label so it will tell you whether this is the frequency or the percent it will put whatever data values you are talking about here so it's a very nice display thanks for watching